This is KCET 28, Los Angeles. Christian factions come at me and go, your books are too, too violent. And I go, give me a break. You know, I mean, Samson slew the Philistines, 50 of them, with the job of an, of an ass. That's exciting to a teenager. Images like these are attracting thousands of kids and scaring parents. At the same time, these books are invading classrooms, and they're risking the proverbial ban in Boston. A look at the strange new world of comic books, next on Life and Times. Major funding for Life and Times is provided by the James Irvine Foundation, which is dedicated to the development of an informed California citizenry. With additional support from GTE, a company committed to telecommunications excellence and an open dialogue among all people. This program is also made possible in part by a grant from the City of Los Angeles Cultural Affairs Department. This is, you got to keep writing Sin City stories. Oh, I will. Man. I will. Just crank them out. I'm doing crab stuff. Marv's a two-time loser. He's been in prison twice. And he has a history of incredible violence. He lives with his mother. He has no driver's license. Um, he lives with his mother when he isn't sleeping in a gutter. Um, he's a lost soul. He has no purpose at all in life. He's a, um, he's a monster. He's a seven-foot brute of a man whose temper is very quick and uh, whose values are very strange, but clearly drawn. Early on in the story, he is seduced by a beautiful woman who winds up dead in his bed, and then the monster's really released because he finally has a purpose to avenge, to him, his beloved after a one-night stand. Uh, he pursues a path of corruption, leaving corpses in his wake right and left, um, just carving his way to the, to the resolution of the mystery. He's the only character I've ever, I've ever written who thinks he's crazy when he isn't. And the ultimate fate he had to face was what society would do to someone like that. Welcome back to Life and Times. I'm Hugh Hewitt. Tonight, a look at the strange world of comic books. It's changed a lot in the last 20 years. Three people are joining me tonight to take a close look at this medium. First, Michael Lucid is a reader of comic books by the tens, sometimes by the hundreds. He's been doing it for years, and thank you, Michael, for being here. Jim Shaw is an artist who draws a lot of his inspiration from the comic book medium. We're welcoming you, too, Jim. And finally, Heidi McDonald. Heidi, welcome. You're a comic book critic and editor. Dude. Heidi, set this up for audience. People have, may have vanished from the comic book scene as I did for 20 years. I used to read them. This ain't Thor. We're not in, in, uh, in Kansas no, anymore. No, no, we're not in Marvel Land anymore. What happened in the last 20 years? Well, about 20 years ago, uh, uh, people who had been reading comics, of course, there was Thor and all those characters, and they think they captured the imagination of the people who read them so that when they came of age, they wanted to create comics that fit their interests then. So they kind of grew up, and they started creating comics for their age. So instead of comics stopping reading them at 11 or 12, they went on for the teen years and into the 20s and so on. So comics simply grew up. Well, what, kind of, what kind of genres are there now? He mentioned alternative right. comics, the traditional age of Marvel. How would you divide up the, uh, the terrain? Well, there's the superheroes, which still are a large part of the market. Um, but there's also the alternative comics, which have a, a lot more. I think those are more of an outgrowth of the old underground comics, you know, Robert Crumb and Gilbert Shelton and those guys. They're more social commentary. Robert Crumb, Jim Shelton, what were they doing and when? They were doing uh, undergrounds in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, things like Zap, Arcade, and Fritz the Cat, of course. So those, they were very counterculture at that time, but they were very you know, popular also, and those also inspired people. Um, just to, comics are a medium like any other, 
and they're a medium for very personal expression. And I think that some of the time, some of the time, right? Exactly. You know, but it's it's like any other art form. You can just create commercial comics which sell and make a living doing it, or you can say what it is that you know really your heart is saying. You say like any other artist. Jim Shaw, Heidi just mentioned an art form. You're an artist. Is this art? At its best, it is. I mean, some of it's just production line stuff. You know, the the uh, one person writes it, another person pencils it, and a third person inks it, and someone else does the lettering. Although sometimes some great accidental stuff comes out of that sort of stuff. We were talking about Jimmy Olsen comics earlier, and and those were almost randomly produced, but they came up with some very surreal combinations. <laughs> When it's really going, I'm thinking of the story and it's, I'm shooting it in my mind. You know, the mind is the camera and I can see all the, the close-ups, the um, establishing shots, the, the up shots, I mean, it, the slow motion, the build of the action. Well, we start with a, a loose story idea or a plot or it's, sometimes we'll even go as far as go all the way and script what the characters are saying. Then we go to like a breakdown stage, which looks something like this. This one was done by Carl Allstetter. He basically uh, figured out what was going to go on in the page, what was going to go in the story, and uh, how it was going to fit on the page, and how basically it was going to be told. Then we'll kick that idea around, and maybe we'll change certain small things about it. And then it comes down to a pencil stage. So we'll uh, flesh it out. We'll get on into the real detail and the lighting exactly where everything's placed. The penciler will give the page to the inker. The inker will then ink it. And then um, a color guidist will do a color guide. And then we'll take the finished piece and scan it in, just the black and, li black and white line art, and then interpret it onto the computer. You know, it's like um, we're basically taking this and adding, enhancing. You know, we're always trying to, we look at this as a guide for the lighting and the shading and that type of thing, but then we're also enhancing, you know, we're trying to make it look as 3D as possible, as realistic as possible. The bottom part's done, and so I've highlighted all the muscles here to make them pop out so it looks 3D. And the dark parts show how it goes in more. And then what I do is just outline a particular area Right there. And do a radial fill, and it comes out with a highlight like that. Sometimes when I'm drawing a face, 